Hi, it's Dr. Lori, and this is Real Bargains. I'm going to give you the treasure map of objects that are being found in thrift stores, yard sales, antique malls. People like you are finding valuable pieces and buying them for pennies on the dollar. I want to show you what, you've, what people have got, and hopefully what you'll get if you'll follow my lead. My first real bargain comes from the Goodwill bins. You all know about the Goodwill bins. The Goodwill bins are where you can actually go through at Goodwill, go through those bins full of stuff, and they're priced by weight. So priced at pennies for objects. This first object is right out of the chute, Tiffany. That's right, it's marked Tiffany and Company. It's a magnifying glass that was found in the Goodwill bins. It comes from a video call. The video caller said to me, Dr. Lori, young couple, video callers going through the Goodwill bins, they thrift often and they resell online. They said, we saw this, we saw Tiffany, we didn't have to ask any more questions, we knew we were buying that. <laughs> and, and smart they were to do just that. Would you buy a Tiffany piece, something marked Tiffany from the Goodwill bins? Of course you would. You'd know you would because I'm going to show you right here with that treasure map. So a couple of things about this piece. First of all, it was marked Padova, Spain, right on it. It said Tiffany and Company, Padova, Spain, which is indicative of, of course, one of the manufacturing areas for Tiffany and Company. So the distribution mark of Tiffany and Company is, and if you don't know what a distribution mark is, a distribution mark is oftentimes found and it showed where something was actually sold. The store mark or the department store mark or the distributor's mark who actually will sell the piece rather than the actual maker's mark. So this piece is designed, it's a beautiful piece, it's from the late 1900s and it is sterling silver. It was marked sterling silver too, sitting in the Goodwill bin. So if you're saying, oh, Goodwill's too high, the thrift store is too high, can't find anything, you're just not looking because the stuff is out there, out there. The magnifying glass, in fact, they paid pennies for it. And what's it worth? Get ready. It's worth $900. That's right. Based on actual sales records where similar pieces have sold on the video call, when I saw the magnifying glass, I appraised it $900 based on other people, what other people have paid for the same objects. Amazing. Pennies in the Goodwill bin. That's a real bargain. My next real bargain comes from a video call. And this video caller said to me, Dr. Lori, you know, I, I had to go with my gut with this. And I said, well, what do you mean? She said, well, I found this particular piece in the Goodwill blue box. So she bought a Goodwill blue box, right? She got a lot of jewelry in that blue box. Some of it was great. Some of it was not so great. She went through all of it and she found this necklace. This necklace is a Rachel Reinhardt necklace. It has the logo tag on it. And my video caller said, I looked at it and I didn't think much of it. I saw that it had kind of this gold link necklace part, this chain part. And then I saw all of the big um, stones or glass. I looked at it and I didn't think it was glass, but I figured the best thing to do was to test it or to bring it to the jeweler. So before I got the Presidium Gemstone Tester, I brought it to my local jeweler. My local jeweler discounted it and said, oh, it's glass, it's just glass, it's junk, it's glass. Okay. So she said, but I had a feeling about it, Dr. Lori, and I knew that I should talk to you, and I knew from watching the channel that I should get the Presidium Gemstone Tester. So she got the Presidium Gemstone Tester and talked to me, and she said, I was very surprised that the jeweler didn't want to test it and just said, no, it's glass, and, and was done. And she said, I got the Presidium Gemstone Tester and I tested it. And when I tested it, it came up amethyst, green amethyst, in fact. They're very large, eight large green amethyst cabochons. And they are, in fact, very nicely applied to this particular necklace, which is gold plated, gold plated, Rachel Reinhardt, who is a New York designer, if you don't recognize the name, gold plated chain, the link chain, and then those big cabochons, those carved or cabochon stones of green amethyst, which tested on the Presidium Gemstone Tester. So she said, I, you know, I was really disappointed that I couldn't just go to my local jeweler and that my local jeweler wouldn't actually tell me what was what. Well, your local jeweler obviously didn't know. And this is a problem. This is why you need the tools, the tools that will help you to, in fact, of course, identify these pieces properly. So then she said, I needed the appraisal because I had the gemstone tester. I now know that the thing that the piece pieces are green amethyst. So I said, you know what? Um, I didn't believe it was glass. I never believed it was glass. I was glad I didn't listen to the jeweler in this particular case. So 
tested it, found that it was in the amethyst range. So I said, okay, so now tell me about the important part of it. What happened when you saw it? She said, well, it's in the blue box. I thought it looked gray. I liked the chunkiness and the bigness of this. Uh, she, she said, I really thought that it could be resellable. I really thought people would be interested in it. I said, I thought it looked really great. I thought it was a really cool and good design. And that's one of the things that I always talk to you about. I talked about identifying quality and understanding what good design looks like. You know, notice the balance of this necklace. You know, my opinion on this necklace was, you know, glass or no glass, it's a good looking necklace. Now, of course, you got amethyst. It's a better looking necklace, right, than glass. Because when the materials are a better quality, the value goes up. And the value went way up. I said, how much did you pay for it? So well, I paid about a dollar when you break it all down and all the pieces I got in the Goodwill blue box, I paid about a dollar for the necklace. I said, that's great because typically on the resale market, Rachel Reinhardt necklaces like this one with of course, amethyst stones or other semi-precious stones retail 500 bucks. So this necklace is worth $500. She got a real bargain and she got a little lesson about her jeweler too. Who should you rely on? Rely on the tools, right? The tools from the treasure hunting toolkit. So that was a real bargain and a great story too. This next real bargain comes from a thrift store as well. And this is the example of a husband trying to help out his wife. <laughs> so this is um, a piece that was purchased at a thrift store. And uh, my video caller was, of course, someone who said to me, you know, Dr. Lori, uh, I've been watching your channel. I'm enjoying it. It's nice to meet you on the video call. And I love meeting all you guys on the video calls too. Um, and she said, my husband found this in a thrift store and he found it in a thrift store for me because what happens is I'm a jewelry fabricator. She called herself a, ju a jewelry fabricator as opposed to a jewelry designer. And then she was nice enough to show me some of the jewelry she made. She made beautiful jewelry. And, um, I said to her, so tell me the story of this piece. She said, well, well, my husband bought this piece. I, we go out to thrift stores and it could be, you know, the big name thrift stores like the Salvation Army or Goodwill, and they could be little mom and pop thrift stores. And what we're looking for is sterling silver. Cause what I do is I take the sterling silver, I break apart the pieces and then I use them for my own jewelry. Okay. So I said, well, so you see this piece. She said, my husband found this piece. What is it? Well, it's a Theodore B star pitcher. It's sterling silver. Theodore B. Starr was a company from New York that was in business from the late part, from about the middle to late part of the 19th century, the 1800s, until 1923 when Reed and Barton bought them out. They're very well known for these Victorian style pitchers and other tableware pieces. This is a beautiful late Victorian pitcher. Uh, a water pitcher. You'll notice all of the hand hammered sterling silver elements. It's marked clearly Theodore B. Star on the bottom. It's marked clearly sterling on the bottom. And it was in a thrift store. Now she didn't see it in the thrift store, but her husband found it and knew of course that his wife would be looking for sterling silver objects. So he sees it in the thrift store. He, he picks it up. He sees the price and the price is kind of scribbled. It's kind of not clear. So it's a four. And then there's a couple of zeros. Not sure if it's $4 or $40 or $400. He can't really tell, can't really make it out. So they go up, he shows it to his wife. His wife goes, wow, that's great. That's a piece of sterling. That's great. I probably won't take it apart for my jewelry fabrication business, but uh, it would be great to have that piece of sterling silver. It's a lot of sterling in this picture. It's a beautiful object. Okay. So they go up to the salesperson and the salesperson says, oh, well, I can't read it either. So I don't know what the tag really says. And she didn't seem too interested. And she said, 40 bucks. So for 40 bucks, they said sold, you know, on the video call, she said to me, she goes, I wasn't asking any questions, $40 for that piece, all this sterling, I was just going to buy it and get out of there. And I said, okay. I said, so what happened? She said, my husband was really happy about it. He was, he was not surprised that I wasn't going to take it apart. And I think it's a beautiful piece and I wanted to do some more inform, get some more information on it, but I knew the person to call and I knew I was having a video call with you. So I figured I'd show it to you and I was really happy to see it. She was surprised to learn that the piece was as old as it was dating to about 1892 to about 1895. That's how old it was. So it's significantly old, definitely an antique. And of course, value on it. She paid 40, eh, that's some money, but she's going to get her value back and her money back on it. And then some, what's it worth? $1,250. Why a big New York sterling silver manufacturer of the Victorian era, a beautiful piece with 
dragonflies and big leaves and nature um, forms that are typical of that time period. It's a gorgeous real bargain. This next real bargain comes from a video call. This video call was a lot of fun. She said to me, you know, Dr. Lori, I saw this piece and, you know, it was in the wrong place, but I was in the right place, <laughs> which was true. So she's in the Goodwill thrift store and she's looking around and she said, you know, she usually goes in because her favorite thing at Goodwill is artwork. And she learns a lot from here and from the channel and from the videos and she likes artwork and that's what she looks for. So she had gone around and she's, and she's looking around. She said, I didn't really see anything that I really liked. I specifically like artwork, so I always look for artwork. And I found myself wandering down the candle aisle. And I don't usually go down the candle aisle. You know, she's not a big candle person. She said, I don't usually go down the candle aisle, but at my Goodwill thrift store, there's a whole aisle devoted to candles and candle stuff. So, you know, candlesticks, I would think, and other candles. And I guess that's pretty common in a lot of thrift stores. So having said that, she said, I'm in the candle aisle and I'm looking and all of a sudden I see this paperweight and it's this crystal paperweight. It's crystal clear. It has these beautiful flowers inside of it. I saw nothing else like it. It was just so gorgeous. It stood out like a sore thumb. And I thought, oh my gosh. And I picked it up. She picked it up, looked underneath. She saw that it was signed and dated. And she said, well, with that price signed and dated for $2 and 98 cents, I'm buying this. Candles aside, I'm buying the paperweight. So she said, I didn't know anything about it, but I thought it was gorgeous. And I figured, you know what? I know who to ask <laughs> right about, the, about, of course, the paperweight. So uh, we do the video call and I, you know, I, said, I said, you understand you have a Victor Trambuco paperweight and you have a Victor Trambuco paperweight that you got at Goodwill. And heads of state have Victor Trambuco paperweights and museums have Victor Trambuco paperweights and celebrities have Victor Trambuco paperweights. Let me tell you, you're in good company. There are some very, very important influential collectors who have Victor Trambuco paperweights. It's crystal. It's of course done in a style that's known as lamp work. It's beautiful glass work. It's by some of the world's best artisans. It's a gorgeous paperweight and it was signed and of course dated. So icing on the cake when you've got it signed and dated. She said, well, I thought I didn't get any artwork, but in fact, I got a beautiful work of art that day. It just happened to be in the candle aisle. I said, so how much did you pay for it? She said, I paid $2.98, just like the price tag said. And I got to tell her during the video call appraisal that it's worth $750. That's right. For that nearly $3 investment, $750. It was a real bargain and a real beauty too. This next real bargain comes from a video call at a thrift store at the Salvation Army. And this one was really interesting because this person said, you know what? I go in, Dr. Lori, I look at the jewelry case. I like the jewelry case. I look right there and I either have love at first sight or I don't really care for something. I oftentimes bring my loop. I bring my loop with me when, of course, I'm going shopping and I usually take out the loop right there at the store. I don't worry about feeling you know, like I shouldn't do that. I don't get embarrassed. I think I want to look at it right there and then. But I saw this and what attracted me to this was the black and white contrast of this necklace. Of course, a costume jewelry necklace and I really liked it, but I wasn't sure what it was. So it has glass beads and I was happy to tell her that it has, of course, glass beads and then those that sort of on um, the black glass beads. And then of course it has the white leaf areas, the white leaf sort of overlay pattern on each one of the beads. Um, in between, there are separator beads, which are of course um, small Aurora Borealis crystals and they separate the necklace. It's really a nice piece. It's 18 inches long and it has that characteristic mid-century modern fish hook clasp in the back and a couple of little white beads to hold, of course, that extender. So it's really a nice piece. I liked it very much when I saw it during the video call. And she said, well, I saw it, I bought it. I was like, I'm not leaving here without it. So I said, okay. She said, well, the jewelry stuff, you know, the jewelry can be, you know, under $10 or over or under $5 in my particular store. So 
this piece cost six dollars and 99 cents and i knew i was going to buy it i said all right I said when i took out my loop this was the um this was the deciding factor for me it said vendome on it so the vendome mark was right on the clasp i knew where to look because of the channel dr Lori. so that's good and of course i had my loop which helped too so for her six dollar and 99 cent investment it was worth I appraised it at $200 and it's a real bargain for a lot of reasons. Costume jewelry, specifically named costume jewelry. And I tell you the names that are more valuable than other names, of course. Um, costume jewelry, specifically brand name costume jewelry pieces like this Vendome necklace worth $200. It's a real bargain too. This next real bargain comes from a video call and it was an online marketplace auction. So this was purchased during, through an online marketplace. So, you know, an auction's going on and she decides to bid on this piece. So she sees this piece and what attracted my client to this, my video caller to this, was in fact that it was a full set in the original box by a very famous Parisian Paris, France brand name, Christophe Cutlery. The cutlery set was intact and she was excited about that, but it looked bad. She said it looked bad and it was dirty. She figured she would clean it, that she'd put the time into cleaning it. And she knew that it was very, very high quality and high end, but it wasn't in good, it wasn't in good presentation shape, if you will. So it looked bad because of course it being quite dirty. So She's on the video call and she said, you know, Dr. Lori, there's a long story to this prior to me finding your channel. I said, well, what's your, what's your story? What do you mean? She said, well, I bought this and I cleaned it. I had the knives had a little bit of pitting. So I actually had them what I would consider restored by a, a professional metal worker, but it, he didn't charge me anything because he just had the tool. He was a friend of mine. He had the tool to actually just make it look better. So that was great. That was a big help. She said, and I listed it. I was a new seller on a particular online auction site and i listed these and i listed the whole set with the original box intact for 900 dollars. well because i was a new seller they got they rejected the listing because i can't sell anything as a new seller for anything over 500 dollars. so i got disgusted and i got upset about that and i just put them in the basement and i left them in the basement for probably probably a year until I started to watch your channel and I found you, Dr. Lori, and I started to learn things and I thought I better do a video call and find out more about those. So I rediscovered these. I brought them, you know, back into sort of, you know, circulation of the things that I was selling. I got some experience selling online and I decided to get an appraisal from you. I said, okay. And I said, um, I said, so tell me a little bit more about what you know. And she said, well, I don't know much. Well, they are sterling silver, right? They're made in Paris. They have the original Christoph box. They, of course, are a cutlery set. It has the ladle, it had knives, it has forks, and it has spoons. It's really quite beautiful, and it's in very good condition now since she put some elbow grease into it. And, of course, um, the original box was not soiled. The original box was in good shape, too, which she had to do a little bit of cleaning it up. But, you know, a little bit of elbow grease was worth it. So she said she's really thankful that she didn't sell the pieces prior right for her nine hundred dollars and here's why she paid 125 dollars for the set so okay they're sterling silver there's a lot of weight to them it's a high-end brand name um very high end so she said she was willing to pay that much for them she didn't she still saw that as a bargain for her i said well when i tell you the value you're still gonna see it as a bargain in fact they're worth the set with the original box from this time period, $3,000. That's right. That sterling silver set retails at $3,000. Actual sales records, based on actual sales records, where someone paid that much for a similar set recently. It was a very good investment of $125 and a beautiful set as well. She said, I'm not going to keep them. I wanted to keep them, but when I'm saving for a house, she was a young woman in her late 20s, early 30s. She said, I'm saving for a house. That's really what my dream is. I want that for me and my family. And I'm going to utilize the benefit or, you know, of uh, the profits from this. I'm going to utilize that toward my, toward my new home. So that's a real bargain in a lot of ways. You're pursuing a dream and you found a great piece at a low price. That's a real bargain set too. Beautiful, right out of Paris. This next real bargain comes from the Priority Ask Dr. Lori service, which is where you can get unlimited appraisals 
uh, based on your photographs when you submit them. So this comes from the Habitat for Humanity thrift store and she found these candlesticks. You can find all kinds of stuff at all the thrift stores. Sometimes it's architectural salvage and sometimes it's home decor pieces or clothes or jewelry or all kinds of things. But this, of course, pieces of home decor came all the way from Finland. They actually are Pente Sarpaneva and Pente Sarpaneva are relatively well-known mid-century modern designer of candlesticks and other kinds of wares. Scandinavian design, really big in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. These pieces, of course, date to about the 1960s, 1970s. They're bulbous candlesticks, bulbous at the top. They flare at the bottom, and in the middle, they have something called brazing. They're brazed metal in the middle. They're brass, and many of the great abstract expressionist sculptors like Seymour Lipton and David Smith and others actually um, would use brazing. It's a particular technique to melt rods of metal onto a sculpture or onto candlesticks in this particular case to make a different texture look. So that's what we're looking at here. These pieces were, as I said, made in Finland and these pieces, these candlesticks were sitting on a shelf, brass candlesticks at the Habitat for Humanity thrift store. So she looks at them and she decides that she's going to purchase them and she thinks, well, they look mid-century modern to me. They're really quite nice and they're the right price. I said, so what was the right price? What did you pay for them? She said, I paid a dollar. I said, a dollar. A dollar is really good for these high-end designer named Finnish candlesticks from the mid-century modern period. I got to tell her what they're worth, and they're a real bargain too, $750 for the pair. That's what they sell for. I'm Dr. Lori. That's real bargains. I hope you find your real bargain real soon.